Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Debt toll rises in West Darfur violence as Sudan imposes state of emergency. Detainees lead a rising against inhumane conditions in US prison facility. Fatal crackdown on social leaders and former combatants continues in Colombia. And in our video section, we take a look at the World Health Day and the demand for equal vaccine access. In our first story, the UN on Tuesday reported that at least 56 people have been killed in violent clashes in the West Darfur state of Sudan. According to the UN OCHA, the deaths took place following clashes between the African Al Masalit and Arab tribes. The West Darfur Doctors Committee reported on April 6 that 132 people had been injured. As reported by Radio Dabanga, the group later also announced another 32 deaths and 78 injuries. Violence broke out after two unarmed Masalit men were killed by gunmen in El Janina in city on Saturday. Gunfire was reported on April 4th and also on April 6th. The Sudanese government declared a state of emergency in the area on April 5th. Thousands were reportedly forced to flee the area as violence continued. The UN also reported on Tuesday that the local power station had been destroyed and there was no electricity. As of April 6th, all humanitarian flights and operations in the city have been cancelled. El Jenaina serves as a centre for humanitarian aid in the region, impacting around 700,000 people. The deaths reported this week come just months after 250 people were killed in clashes in West and South Darfur. The violence also displays around 100,000 people. Clashes between Arab herdsmen and African tribes often begin with disputes over resources such as land and cattle. The African tribes' people are mostly either sedentary farmers or live in camps for internally displaced persons. They were uprooted from their lands during the civil war led by the regime of Omar al-Bashir. It was during this war that members of the Arab tribes were heavily armed. These weapons are now deployed in conflicts with the African tribes. The Arab tribes also have strong links with the Rapid Support Force paramilitary. The RSF was formed under Bashir's regime and was deployed in genocidal campaigns in Darfur and other regions. In our next story, we go to the US where detainees in the city of St. Louis held a protest against inhumane prison conditions. The uprising began on the night of April 4th at the City Justice Center prison. According to local reports, people detained at the facility broke the street-facing windows, lit small fires and began shouting their demands. Chants of, we want court dates, could be heard in the footage posted online. Protests were also previously held in the facility in December, January and February. A statement describing the conditions in the prison was published by Expo St. Louis in February. Jail authorities had reportedly not responded to the issues raised by inmates for months. These included access to protective gear against COVID-19, visitations with friends and family, and proper nutrition and adequate food. According to the statement, people who had contracted COVID-19 were not properly quarantined. People were also denied COVID tests and were only given basic masks once every two weeks. The statement also alleged that people were being held without trial, with some being detained for up to five years. They are also unable to properly access the jail's law library to get important information for their cases. People were also denied adequate clothing and heating during cold weather. They are not given the six recreational breaks per day mandated by correctional guidelines. The protest held last December was also met with heavy repression. According to the statement, the inmates were tear gassed, hosed down and some were transferred to the medium security institution. Called the workhouse, the prison is known for having severely violent and unsafe conditions. Our next story is about Colombia, where a continuing campaign of social violence is being carried out against social leaders and former combatants. As of April 6, 43 social leaders have been assassinated in the country. 14 former combatants of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC, have also been killed. The guerrilla group was disarmed after the signing of a peace accord with the Colombian state in 2016. Former members are now part of a reincorporation process. Despite this, 263 people have been killed so far. The continued assassinations have been carried out by illegal armed groups and drug traffickers. Additionally, around 91 people have been killed in 25 massacres carried out in the past three months. These findings have been published by the Institute of Development and Peace Studies, or IndyPaths. The organization has also noted what it called a disastrous increase in forced displacements due to violence. Since January, around 15,000 people have had to flee their homes in 65 mass displacement events. Many are forced to flee their homes due to conflicts between paramilitary groups over resources. This includes control over land for drug, drug trafficking and illegal gold mining. Indigenous communities and activists defended, defending the land are also targeted by these armed groups. According to Indipas, 1,157 activists and social leaders have been killed since 2016. And in our video section, we look at the various demands raised on April 7th, which is World Health Day. A key demand has been for access to vaccines, with a massive inequality prevailing in terms of access to vaccines as far as developing countries are concerned. Here's a video on the issue. April 7th is World Health Day. The significance of this day is being felt now more than ever as we stand in the midst of a pandemic. With the number of COVID-19 infections surging again across the world, it is clear that the only defense is herd immunity through mass vaccinations. 
but access to vaccines against COVID-19 remains largely unequal. The World Health Organization in its campaign this year has highlighted that the world is an unequal one. Some people are able to live healthier lives and have better access to health services than others entirely due to the conditions in which they are born, grow, live, work and age. The pandemic has made these inequalities clearly visible, particularly in the distribution of vaccines. Vaccine nationalism has led to a handful of countries in the global north hoarding most of the world's vaccine supplies. The global north has secured more vaccines than they require, enough to vaccinate their populations three times over. Canada, for instance, has enough vaccines to vaccinate its citizens five times. The global north, with less than 14% of the world's population, has secured more than half the total anticipated vaccines. As a result, in North America, for every 100 people, over 30 vaccine doses have been delivered. In Europe, this number is around 19. However, in Africa, less than one vaccine dose has been delivered per 100 people as of April 6th. It is estimated that in wealthier countries, mass immunization is likely by mid of 2022. However, in poorer economies, mass immunization is unlikely to happen before 2024 if it happens at all. These countries could see as many as 2.5 million avoidable deaths because of this delay. Meanwhile, big pharma companies are unwilling to share their vaccine technologies with the world. Over 100 member countries in the World Trade Organization are supporting the proposal of suspending patents on COVID vaccines and medicines, which would make it possible to expand production. But the US, UK, EU, Canada, Australia and their allies are blocking this from happening. Profits are being placed above lives. The COVAX initiative of the World Health Organization, which was supposed to provide vaccines to poor countries, also stands neglected. Despite the fact that the majority of the world's countries signed on to the COVAX alliance, vaccines are not being distributed to the global south in sufficient numbers. COVAX had a target of acquiring 2 billion doses by 2021 and vaccinating about 1 billion people, which is one-fifth of the target population in the developing countries. Even with these modest targets, the COVAX platform has reached only about 50% of its target and it is woefully short of funds as rich countries focus on holding two to three times their needs. People's organizations across the globe are marking this day to strengthen the demand for free vaccines for all and an end to medical apartheid. The need to halt all non-essential activities is being reinforced in countries where the number of cases are rising. Movements and organizations are also calling for suspension of public debt that poor nations have with wealthier ones, incentivizing the production of healthy foods and suspending war-related activities, police repression and violent evictions. Moreover, the people are also demanding an end to all unilateral course and measures imposed by the United States and its allies, which seriously affect people's access to food, medicine, protective equipment and even fuel, all of which are fundamental to combat the pandemic. On this day, people's movements and organizations are standing together to reaffirm their commitment to building a more just and equal world where life is put before profits. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.